placenta is sending pure blood through umbilical vein. The umbilical vein is going to enter into the fetus through the umbilicus, go towards the liver. So it is not straight, it is going at an angle and it will divide into two. 30-40% will store all the food in the liver. So the liver grows, so the abdominal circumference grows. So if this does not happen, growth retardation, abdominal circumference become less. The rest of the pure blood enters into the fetal inferior vena cava via a small vessel called ductus venosus. Now inferior vena cava we all know opens into the right atrium. The foramen ovale is open at that time. So it is opening at an angle in the right atrium. All the pure blood immediately goes towards the left, left atrium and left ventricle and the aorta and supplies the purest blood goes to the brain and the heart itself. Then the lungs, from the lungs, now impure blood is coming through ductus arteriosus and in the arch of aorta. And after the arch of aorta, the blood in the rest of the uh, aorta is mixed. It is not pure blood. Okay. So all the other parts of the fetal body are going to get medium oxygenated blood. That is what the fetus requires. The fetal gut, the fetal kidney, the fetal ovary, the fetal tissue, everything. The fetal limbs, femoral artery. Now this will, the aorta will enter, divide into common iliacs. Common iliacs will divide into external and internal iliacs. External iliac goes to the limbs. Internal iliac supplies all the pelvic organs, eight or nine branches. And it will end as two umbilical arteries. And those two umbilical arteries come back into the placenta. So if you understand this, then to, for pure blood going to the fetus, the ductus venosa should be dilated. No, first the umbilical vein should be dilated and not pulse. So or the pure blood goes to the fetus. Then the ductus venosa should be dilated. Okay, the resistance should be low. So or the pure blood goes to the heart. Then the fetal aorta should be dilated. So not very dilated, normal dilated, muscular artery, 0.7 resistance. So the purest bloods go to the brain and the rest and then the umbilical artery should be dilated to half because you want the impure blood out. So if there are vascular changes in the umbilical, in the ductus venosus, in the aorta, in the umbilical artery, there will be uh, growth retardation because the impure blood will not come out and the pure blood is not. Then no blood vessel is going to be dilated as it is. So cerebral blood vessel will get 0.7 RI. If the cerebral blood vessel dilates and the umbilical blood vessel constricts what we call as the cerebroplacental ratio alteration, that means brain is getting more blood. Why? Because of hypoxia. So if hypoxia occurs, which we will tell you later, then there is an adaptation. So for us, Doppler means that we want a safe mother and a safe and normal fetus. So we are, go we are going to try to assess fetal hypoxia. We are going to try to assess fetal anemia by assessing the hemodynamics or the blood vessels in the umbilical, cerebral and cardiac. And it is also going to help us in tell you fetal cardiac defects. It will tell you non-cardiac obstetrical situations and malformations. And it will tell you fetal uh, anomaly screening or chromosomal anomaly screening where the blood vessels are uh, faulty. So DD in multiple pregnancies, sharing of blood, all that. So ultrasound examination in color Doppler has become an integral part. You cannot say that I'm going to order color Doppler only if I see that fetus. It has to be ordered in all. At 13 weeks, at 20 weeks, at 28 weeks. So then you, your obstetric examination is complete. At 13 weeks to see the ductus venosus for chromosomal anomalies. At 20 weeks to see placental, um, uh, complete placental uh, formation or and at 28 weeks for growth retardation or IUGR. Now fetal growth retardation uh, will lead to IUDs and stillbirth. So previously we used to call it IUGR. IUGR term is now not used or retardation restriction that term is also not used so it's now fetal growth retardation or fetal growth restriction FGR should be the term used you should not write IUGR at all that's the older term and these babies will need more ICU care they will survive if they do with morbidities 
and uh, so the Doppler surveillance will tell us to deliver these babies in time and we will help to save more babies in earlier gestation even if they are born in one, one and a half kilos also. So the carry home baby of uh, uh, healthy baby of your fetal uh, growth retarded will be dependent on how you have delivered and what is the development of this fetus. So for evaluation of fetal growth retardation we will look at the mother side, we will look at the fetal side. Why it occurs is because uterine artery will not give blood. Mother is very sick. Mother has cardiac disease, uh, renal disease, diabetes, uh, uh, starvation, poor socioeconomic status, not eating properly, chronic diseases all will lead to less substrate going. Then she might have pregnancy induced hypertension, so uterine artery will be constricted. She might have renal disease, all that ap Apla syndrome, antiphospholipid syndrome, all that will lead to mother's side. So we need to assess this. In the fetal side, the growth retardation may be because of the fetal anomalies. So firstly, you have to evaluate fetal anomalies. Complete fetal anomaly scan at 20 weeks. Then you have to do the color Doppler to see that the umbilical artery is dilated, the uterine artery is dilated. And all other arteries are not dilated, like the cerebral and all, which are normal. That has to be seen. You have to do a fetal echo because fetal echo, cardiac defects are re, uh, associated with uh, a growth retardation. Then, of course, some invasive testing if required, amniocentesis or NIPT now. And, of course, karyotype and assess for fetal infection. So, these are the causes and Doppler is going to help you determine all the causes. So, what is fetal growth retardation? It is 50% of the normal expected growth. A fetus that fails to reach its potential growth will be growth retarded. And it could be due to maternal causes or due to placental causes or due to fetal causes. And that is how. And it is best measured by abdominal circumference, less than 10th centile or a estimated fetal weight or a ratio of estimated fetal weight and abdominal size. It is not measured best by BPD, female length and all. Abdominal circumference, estimated fetal weight are the best two parameters for it. And of course Doppler. So what will Doppler tell us? If the Doppler is normal, then it is not growth retardation, even if the baby is small. It is constitutionally small baby. Parents may be small, genetically small, so that's it. So it's in the normal growth pattern. It's a small baby. So nothing is needed here. No increased perinatal death and will occur if the Doppler. That's why Doppler becomes very important. If the Doppler is abnormal, then it is utero-placental insufficiency or which may be hypoxia, which will lead to hypoxemia, which will lead to acidosis and fetal death. So how do we know the weight? We do that less than 10th percentile and less than 10th percentile forming in the growth curve, normal growth curve, growth charts are very easy. You just go to Google, type fetal growth charts. You will get a printed growth chart. Please fill those growth charts in your antenatal uh, card. Now this uh, growth retardation could be symmetrical, so it comes early and could be asymmetrical, which comes later. Early growth uh, restriction is usually due to chromosomal malformation and constitutionally small babies. That means the baby is small as it is. Without color Doppler, it is not growth retardation. With color Doppler abnormalities, it is early fetal growth retardation because of chromosomal anomalies. Down syndrome, Edward syndrome, Patau syndrome, chromosomal anomalies on chromosome 6, 19, 17, which are common live bonds. Fetal asymmetrical is when the placenta has not invaded the spiral arteries properly. So the spiral arteries are still constricted and the spiral artery resistance is still over 7.7. .7. So the uterine artery uh, resistance is still 0.7. So less blood is going. And if less blood goes, the growth will not be proper. And that will be late onset growth. So late onset growth, growth retardation will be due to utero-placental insufficiency. And that you can see by doing a Doppler of the uterine artery and a Doppler of the umbilical. So uterine artery on the mother side, uh, umbilical artery on the fetal side of placenta. So we redefine fetal growth retardation as First, previously it was known as small fetus with abnormal umbilical artery are all growth retarded. That is what a normal lot of radiologists will still tell you. But today, fetal growth retardation is expected fetal weight is less than 10 centile with an abnormal fetal Doppler, with an abnormal maternal Doppler, with a very low centile with normal Doppler's or less than 3. 
So the fetal growth retardation definition is now based on color Doppler of mother fetus both along with weight and not only the umbilical which we used to do previously. So that, that is how you will know or classify your growth retardation. So Doppler in growth retardation will identify the etiology, placental or non-placental, very clear now, uterine artery. To identify hypoxia, hypoxia it will identify when the ductus venosus diastolic reduces. So that means baby is going to hypoxia. When the cerebral flow increases, so baby is in hypoxia, so pushing all the blood to the brain because it is trying to save the brain. Brain is more sensitive and uh, that is known as fetal adaptation. And then if this adaptation, the ductus venosus becomes zero, the cerebral becomes very high, the umbilical becomes reversed, that means it's time to deliver this baby, otherwise this baby will die within next 24 to 72 hours inside. So that is how we decide. Now what happens with all of us? We get a classical report like this. This is a report. PS, ED, TMAX, MD, RI, PI, SD, heart rate of all the vessels. And I can bet 90% of the gynecologists don't look at this report. Because you don't understand this. We have never been taught. We have we've been taught only to uh, deliver babies, vacuum, forceps, cesarean, that sort. We have not been told how and when. So this is actually, are you right? Am, am I right? Do you look at this? Then we don't look at the pictures because we have never seen the pictures. We have never done Doppler ourselves. We don't look at this. So what do we do? We ring up the radiologist. Should we do cesarean or not? Now he, why will he advise? He is not the one who is handling the patient. You are the one. So you have to understand this report. You have to understand the uh, waves. You have to understand what is what is diastole, what is systole. So some umbilical is, you're seeing good diastole 50%, very good. If you're seeing aorta 30%, very good. If you're seeing uh, aorta 30%, very good. If you're seeing umbilical here, vein, non-pulsatile, very good. So it's if you look at the waves, you can decide it is very good. No, you don't want to read the reports, don't read. But at least look at the waves and decide and sometimes previously because of the charges Doppler were very high, Are please don't give pictures, just charge 100 rupees less, we would tell the radiologist. Now if you don't get pictures, you will not be able to see what it is. So that's, that's what happens. So most of the time, sir, kya kare, delivery kare ki nahi kare, bachcha theek ho raega ki nahi raega. This is the questions uh, which we obstetricians ask. And this is not, uh, nobody is going to answer us. You are the only one who's, who, who needs to answer this. So answer this to the question is, clinically evaluate, you are seeing the baby, ultrasound, growth, see the growth, fetal weight uh, percentile, less than 10 or very small, C for hypoxia. Now, if hypoxia occurs, let me explain this also. If hypoxia occurs because of whatever reason, maternal reason or placental reason or fetal reasons, the arch of aorta has receptors. So, as soon as the oxygen is less in the ductus venosus, and the ventricle to the arch, these receptors get stimulated. Now these receptors will cause fetal adaptation. So they cause dilatation of cerebral, uh, cardiac, adrenal arteries only and constriction of all other arteries. So the cerebral will receive more blood because brain needs to be saved. Adrenals receive more blood because adrenals have to be saved. They are the ones which uh, give you corticosteroids and heart muscles need more blood, heart has to be saved. So this is normal. So if you look at the Doppler of these, the cerebral which was showing a 7 resistance, 0 0.7, 30% diastole, will start showing 50% diastole. More blood is going to the brain and the adrenal. Rest all the vessels will be constricted. So aorta which was showing 0 0.7 will show 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Renal will show 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Kidneys are getting less blood, less urine. Oligohydromnios will occur. Okay, so that that is how uh, color Doppler helps you in grading what is going to happen now. Or what is name? So reflex redistribution of the cardiac output occurs and this will try to save the baby's heart, heart brain and adrenals till we intervene. If we don't intervene, this baby will finally die. So we need to intervene. So what it will do? There will be decreased blood flow kidneys, oligohydromnios. There will be decreased blood flow to the lungs, uh, respiratory distress syndrome on birth. There will be decreased blood flow to the gut, necrotizing enterocolitis after birth. If the baby is born crying, you feed the baby, it dies. 
because the intestine ruptures intestine has been without blood for very long time in the in the uterus so they are very frail and suddenly they'll die increase uh, less blood to the liver and muscles so growth retardation weight will be less and more blood to the brain so brain will uh, get more blood more blood to the heart and more blood to the adrenal so this is known as fetal redistribution or the fetus tries to save itself when faced with a situation of hypoxia so in the antenatal management your doppler will predict growth retardation and your doppler will help in management of the retardation and uh, all the time it will proceed by about 20 days then the biophysical profile becomes abnormal biophysical profile is the anti uh, nst or the cardiotocography and the fetal movements so biophysical profile manning score if you remember five things one acute and four chronic the fetal movement fetal like fetal breathing fetal tone muscle so chronic acute is the fetal heart rate and the chronic are less like fetal tone fetal breathing and so it, it is actually not a good score because it takes four chronic and one acute <coughs> so if there is an acute event of severe bradycardia but the other four chronic are normal the manning score will be 8 by 10 and you'll say it is good but that baby is dying because of the acute event so now we take modified manning score which is known as vincelos and we take only a one acute and one chronic acute is the <coughs> fetal heart rate with movements and the chronic is the <coughs> liker <coughs>